Michael Parlow, how's he uh, tracking for this week? Uh, he trained on Monday and uh, he'll train again tomorrow, the main training session. Um, it's, we're certainly not flirting with the idea, we're quite serious about it. Um, uh, Mick's a guy that um, probably doesn't need a hell of a lot of football, as in his football brain. Um, it's just whether uh, I can get it through the fitness and strength guys and um, put him up for selection because I don't think it's going to take him long to find the ball. So, Mark, you're saying that you're probably keen to explore it as much as possible? Absolutely. And um, I've seen his game and uh, there's nothing in it to, to suggest to me that he couldn't be a good sub player. Mm. What have the fitness and strength guys said to you so far this week? Um, let's put it this way, we're debating at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> Because like last week, oh sorry, was, yeah, last week he, you said that he wouldn't be used as a sub player, but you'd go through the whole process with him. Like, has that game sort of changed your mind? No, I mean, just have a look at. I mean, you, the thing that you grapple with is if you get an injury early. That it, then, for instance, Reese only played 18 minutes last week. I mean, why can't Michael do that? I mean, that's naturally barring injury. So we'll see how he goes tomorrow night. I think. Um, just emotionally, it'll be enormous, enormous lift for um, the team and also the supporters. You mentioned that, in fact, I think the last time you spoke, that you know sometimes you, you play a card like this, it just benefit for the side. Mm. Do you still sense that that could be something that the the, uh, the side could really grab and use? Uh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, I Have just you been in similar situations where there's been sort of like coaches throwing in a, an X factor and it's done something for the side. Yeah, I have um, many times. Many times. I remember, you know, Sean McManus' last game, and that was versus West Coast some years ago now, and the emotion of that and what it did for the team during that game and the build up to the game. So, yeah, I think it's the positives far outweigh the negatives. It wouldn't be possible without Southwell, Mark. This wouldn't be something you'd easily considering without uh, Probably not, no. Probably enhances the thinking behind it, yeah. What happens if he does play, the same as a sub, if he's injured in that first five minutes, do you feel confident that he could run out the rest of the game? Michael could sit in the forward pocket and occupy whoever he was playing on from an Essendon defending point of view. So, uh, to me, I mean, it's a it's a big... Um, it's a big... Uh, Question as to whether we risk that, but as I said, there's no problem with the injury. There's, you know, um, that he's completely over that, and it's just about his body being able to handle the condition of an AFL game. Is that another element too, like his goal kicking? He would, he did kick, I think, two or three goals on a few occasions last season. Mm. Um, it, your keep your forward line isn't functioning as well as you'd like. Is that another bring that another element to it? I'm sure. Pavlich and Maine and those sort of guys would like Mick down there. You know, if that if that's where he was to g gonna play, you know. So, you know, uh, as I said, it's, there's a it's gonna be an interesting 24 hours for us. Yeah. You seem pretty excited about possibly even playing. No, I do. Yeah, yeah. Because I know how good he is. I well, know he's pretty excited. Didn't he text you after the game again, just saying halves uh, I pulled through pretty well. He said, Coach, I'm ready. Can I get on a flight? And I said, no, stay there, Michael. <laughs> and uh, I mean, he's just that you know, infectious guy, and, and particularly with his teammates. And I know what sort of uh, unity that would bring to the team if he was to run out with them. So I guess it's... Uh, you know, until you really get in this situation where he's back and playing, it, uh, the effect of maybe prematurely bringing him into the team far outweighs the negatives, I reckon. The, ri the, risk, the obvious risk, Mark, is that he has to play more than a quarter and there's a soft tissue problem that arises out of lacking condition. You seem to have been very careful to tick all the boxes so far with his, yeah. with his comeback. I mean, there is that at stake, isn't there? There is. The, the, that's the only risk, the soft tissue. Um, but I remember Tendai only a month ago, I mean, he was out for 10 weeks and we were dealing with the same issue and we but gradually we can build him up through the sub. So he played, you know, just over a quarter first game, then a sort of nearly towards three quarters and then naturally last week a full game. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm trying to work with the fitness and strength guy, or Jason, for that matter, that it, what's the difference between a half at 
waffle level and a half at potentially AFL level. That's that's the topic. Yeah. Um, did you? I presume you had a GPS and all that sort of stuff on that. No, we actually didn't down there. No, we just let it go for this game. Yeah. Mark, speaking of sort of people coming back, this could have been a completely offhand comment, but when Milo spoke after the game, he mentioned something about watching Anthony Morabito in the waffle as he comes back. Is there any chance Morabito could play again this season? Not at this stage, no. Okay, because no. he he's been doing a bit of training, running around, he looks, he looks all right. Yeah, he's just building up his program. You've got to be very careful with an injury like that, yeah. Especially second-year players, though. Mm. Rog ready to go, huh? Rog will play this week for South Fremantle, so it's good. Yeah, we're just starting to get a few players back, and it's important that we do. Um, but more importantly, m make sure that they they can handle the AFL and um, the fitness of it and the fatigue that seems to have come in quicker with players. So uh, I'd say he's only a week or two away too, yeah, from playing. So, so probably, not this probably the week after, I'd say, yeah. Mm. Mark, um, Peel's given some negative feedback to the reserves team concept. Um, what do you think of that? Oh, I'm, I'm not across. Oh, they've just said that the, the money, the financial side of it isn't enough and it's, it's a bit of a laugh. What do you think? Uh. I mean, I'm not getting into the financial side of it. All I know is it's is a direct benefit for a lot of our players and we need to make sure that we can fast-track them into playing AFL as quick, quick as we can and that's the only reason that, from a coaching department point of view, that we need it to happen. How important is it, in terms of building a premiership side, to have that reserve side? Um, for, for the understanding of the players on how we play in-game, it's so important because at the moment we find that if players have spent periods of time in the waffle and then through injury or through them playing well at waffle, we introduce them into the way we play at AFL level, there can be some in, indecision into what they do because they're in the habit of playing for a team at waffle level. So I hope you understand what I mean. Is that, uh, that's something you feel most of the time like this, isn't it, when you've got That's right. six or seven guys who may not yep. be out there under other teams. Yep. Mm. Mark, how do you see your former Kai Essendon? Um, where do you think they're tracking at this point in time? You know, losing last Friday night against <coughs> Melbourne unexpectedly to most. Mm. Um, no doubt you've got your spies out there. How do you think they're tracking? I mean, they've had a few injuries just recently themselves, and you, you, no matter which way you look at this competition, you come back to the field quite quickly. Uh, yeah, they've got the point of discussion. They're playing three ruckman at the moment. Whether they go with that on the big ground over here at Subiaco, um, they've got a couple of players back ready to come in, um, Watson and Hurley. So it gives them a different dimension. Probably to get their captain back in the side is you know, important to them. Um, Hurley's an up-and-coming young player that can play forward or back. Um, I mean that's up to them and how they sort of see the, the demographics of who they play this weekend. Um, they're fighting for a spot like we are. Um, Half a game between us, um, interesting and there's a lot of pressure on because of that situation. Not, there's not a lot between 5th and 12th for that matter. So, And that's how it's going to be for the rest of the year, to be honest. Are you convinced that Job will be here? Well, matter of fact, I know Job's going to be here because um, I actually got a birthday card. Uh, it's my birthday this week on Saturday. I actually got a birthday card and it reads like this. Dear Mark, wishing you a great day from the team at the Essendon Football Club. Go Bombers. Joe Watson. So my birthday's on Sunday, so Job's actually sent me a card wishing me a happy birthday. <laughs> so I actually got this on Monday, right? So I actually got this on Monday. So I text Job and I said, look, Job, I'm having a birthday party on Saturday night. And we're going to have pies... <laughs> and cans of coke. So if you're available, if you if you're coming over, can you text me back and just respond to the fact that you are are you coming to my birthday party? And for that matter, I text Fletcher and, and McVeigh as well, and I haven't heard back from them yet. So, but anyway, at least I've advertised it. That's what's on Saturday night. So if they come over, these guys and Job is playing. Well, Job, I'm only responding to the birthday card. <laughs> I hope you can make it to my birthday party. <laughs> there you go. It's the least they can do for what you've done for the Essendon footy. That's party. right. They, uh, don't forget. <laughs> uh, you, you mentioned Bruce Palmer earlier on the yeah. role he played last week. Mm. Paul Connors, the player manager, said on the, on the 
newspaper website that he would put money on in playing for Greater Western Sydney? I find that interesting that uh, Paul's not his manager and he's saying that. Uh, I find that they really compromise their workforce, I reckon, when they say things like that. Um, yeah, it's not what, what is it for him to talk about a player that's not in his domain? Uh, so, look, yeah, I mean, we've been, we've spoken about Reese and, and this situation before. Um, it's just an ongoing debate that'll keep, keep going for that matter, but I think Paul should worry about his own players and not other, other, um, Management companies play. Are you finding it tough to get him enough game time? He has been sort of subbed a little bit, either subbed out or, or subbed in. Yeah. So you mentioned him not getting into the game until late. Um, it wasn't a good time for Reese to come on. Uh, we, and we were grappling with, you know, what's the right thing to do? Yeah. Uh, and, and Paul's been really good about saying, look, we're not going to play Reese until late. Yeah. Uh, and that's been sort of the message that's been sent out to the players. Yeah. Uh, and that's been sort of the message that's been sent out to the players. Yeah. And that's been sort of the message that's been sent out to the players. Yeah. And that's been sort of the message that's been sent out to the players. Yeah. And that's been sort of the message that's been sent out to the players. Yeah. And that's been sort of the message that's been sent out to the players. Yeah. And that's been sort of the message that's been sent out to the players. Yeah. And that's been sort of the message that's been sent out to the players. Yeah. And that's been sort of the message that's been sent out to the players. Yeah. We thought that we should have been able to control the game. And then that's when we sort of sub Reese and then we lost momentum. So it was hard for Reese to get in the game. And yeah, look, reality is that he, he needs to be playing full games. Yeah. Mark, speaking of momentum, you seem to have had a, a bit few issues sort of stopping run runs against Richmond, West Coast, especially the last quarter last week. Can you sort of yeah, go no, into why that might be happening? Not so much West Coast. Oh, I thought that was a, I mean, that, the Derby's are always hard. Hard and tough, and in any given time, sides will kick three or four goals in a row. Um, it's how quickly you can stop that situation, or you can only let it be, say, two, and then you can control the game a little bit more. That the other two games, Richmond and Hawthorne, are something that we've addressed um, in the last quarter on the road. Okay, and what we do under those circumstances. So that's certainly been addressed. If Hawthorne had travelled five times by this stage, what would have they been like in the last quarter? But no one really wants to discuss that, so we just move on. But it's you, it's certainly an issue. You, you mentioned that Edmund had to grapple with Henry Torres. Like, um, what are you thinking with yeah. Griffin and Bradley? Or well, I'm certainly going to persevere with Clark. So I think in time you're going to see this young kid really evolve. So um, I thought I thought he's very assertive, particularly till half time, and a lot more decisive with what he done. There was a couple of marks that he went for that in time he's going to get. Just at this stage, I think he gives us a different type of element to our midfield. He's not just there as a ruckman; he's also there as a as an on-baller or or to complement our midfield. Um, and he's he's got his he can run. You know, he's got good breakaway speed and good pressuring speed. So um, then we've got to make sure that you know Griffin and Kepler contribute in the ruck and we win the stoppage area. But more importantly. We we defend as a group really well, and we can sustain pressure on the opposition. Just going back to Clark, uh, many have said a couple of people. I suppose you reckon they see a bit of Dean Cox in at a young age. Do you see a bit of that as well? That he could develop to be that, that sort of ruckman, big man. Um, it's trying to emulate or, or get near the guys that have done that in their career is quite difficult. But I can certainly what I can see is certainly there's something there that we need to really persevere with here. And I think once we extract. Um, or he extracts some confidence and some continuity in playing at this level. I'm sure you're going to find that this is going to be a, hopefully a weapon for us moving forward. Do you think he'll be a late maturer as a footballer? Well, he is because he, he took up the game late. He was a basketballer as a kid, so and that's what why it's taken three years to work on his football brain aside from his physical attributes. Um, is Mark is Mike Walters any chance this weekend? Uh, he's still. Overcoming his ankle at the moment, or probably not yet. No, he's not is, far away. But. Is that been something that's just pretty much been almost like chronic for the season? Really? Well, it's just been what we call dagging him. You know what dagging is? No, uh, just hanging around. <laughs> 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 uh, have you ever seen that movie Hangover Two? Have you? Which has a yeah. no, no, no. No. You can take me to life. No, I've, be, I've been. I've seen it. That enough's enough. <laughs> the, the Clark decision. You, your season is very delicately poised. Are you? Is that a bit of a long-term thing? No, no, no it's, it's, it's actually been in the... Uh, we've played him every practice game, nearly every practice game for the last three years. And, um, and there's a lot happening behind the scenes as in working with him, trying to get him in transition a lot more. Um, yeah, first year, second year, third year, fourth year players, some, some take longer. Um, it's been forced on us a little bit because of unavailability. Um, but I, I think I think we're going to be talking about 
this guy in a different light in about particularly 12 months, but it'll come on the back of experience at AFL level and hopefully we can continue um, getting back on track and winning. Yeah, regularly, yeah, to, to, to get a grasp and understand and, and, and progress with what he's doing, yeah.